Hello! Welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff, ugh, and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today I have a pipe tobacco review for you. Now, this is one that's been garnering a lot of attention. I've had quite a few different emails, comments, messages about whether or not I'm going to review this blend. Well, yes, I am. And that blend is GLP's Stonehenge Flake. Now, a bit before my time, or at least my time as an avid pipe smoker, GLP's collaborated with John Gawith of Gawith, Hogarth and Company, and he produced this flake. And it was a limited run in 2001. I think they did 1,500 tins. I think because of its limited availability and also because quite a few people seem to really like it, it sold out like crazy. It gained sort of a mythical... Uh, sort of profile amongst pipe smoking forums and communities. People talk about it, uh, whether or not they had some put away, smoking some with, you know, 10 years of age on it and everything. People, people seem to really enjoy it, but GLP's has just reissued this blend. And again, it is made in collaboration with Gawith, Gawith and Hogarth. It is made in Kendall. For the most part, I think pretty much the combination, it's, it's using the sort of empire tobaccos that Gawith Hogarth uses. Um, it is steamed and pressed there and then shipped to the U.S. I don't know if anything is done with it in the Cornell and Deal and Factory, if it's just tinned there or if there is any more blending going on there. It's definitely tinned there. It's the American style CND tins. We'll get into it a little bit more when we read the tin description because GLP's goes into it in quite a bit of depth there. But here we go. The blend is GLP's Stonehenge Flake, produced by Gawith Hogarth and Company and maybe CND as well. It's at least tinned by CND, probably wholly produced by Gawith and Hogarth. It is available at smokingpipes.com. The two ounce tin is 11.48 as of the recording of this video. Pipes and Cigars has it for 11.47, a one cent saving. And Four Noggins has it for 11.50. Now, a word about the availability. Smokingpipes.com has no information about whether or not this blend is going to be discontinued. And on GLP's website, it says that this was going to be in regular production. It's not gonna be a limited run. Pipes and Cigars said, or at least they sent an email out saying that it was going to be a limited run. I tend to believe GLP's, I think the only thing perhaps holding it back would be the fact that even though the original blend was produced in 2001, um, it was discontinued and off the market. So if the deeming regulations, which have been put on hold, the new FDA deeming regulations, which were supposedly going to make it um, so that any blend produced or put on the market after 2007 would have to go through these FDA regulations that were very expensive. It would mean that a lot of newer blends would be taken off the market. The current administration has put those regulations on hold for now. If they are enacted, we don't know for sure whether or not Stonehenge Flake would be affected. Because it was already on the market, I think you do have to resubmit it, but maybe it's not the same process as a brand new blend that was made after 2007. I don't know for sure. For now though, GLP's is going to be producing this regularly. The only limitation on that is the fact that it is made by Gawith and Hogarth, and we all know that their blends, while often available, aren't always constantly available. There do seem to be sort of production delays here and there. So that's a lot of information. Let's get to the tin description though. As usual, there's a fairly lengthy tin description on a GLP's blend, and I'll read it right now. <clears throat> In 2001, I had the honor and pleasure of collaborating with GH and Company's John Gawith on a very special tobacco. And after nearly a year of development, Stonehenge Flake, a modern Virginia Perique blend steeped in English tradition, was born. Fine Virginias are layered with Louisiana Perique and just a touch of Burley for added body and a fuller flavor, then steamed, hot pressed, and matured. The cakes are thinly sliced and tinned, ready for your smoking pleasure today and for many years to come. So there you have it. it gives a little bit of the background, stuff that we already pretty much covered in the beginning of this review. The blend type is... I hesitate to call it a vapor because to me, a vapor is a strict Virginia Perique blend. It has Virginia and it has Perique. This also has some Burley. You could say it's a Virginia base blend, a Virginia blend, or if you don't want to be too pedantic about it, you could call it a vapor. The blend contains as Gawith, did he say this? I think GLP's mentioned it on his blog, on his website, uh, the exact 
locality of where these tobaccos are from. Flu cured and sun cured Virginias from Brazil, Zimbabwe, and Malawi. And a touch of Burley, which is also from Malawi, I believe, and fine cut Louisiana Perique. Now, let's get to the vital stats. The flavoring on this one. Aha. Now, Many of you will know that the Gawith and Hogarth blends are often considered to be Lakeland blends. They're from the Lake District in the UK, and there is a particular essence that is often added to these sorts of blends. It has a slightly floral, slightly soapy flavor. This blend has a bit of that essence added uh, with a bit of a chocolatey cocoa essence as well. So there is a little bit of flavor added to this blend. The cut is a flake, and I'll show you that right now. GLP's Stonehenge Flake. Now, even though it is produced in Kendall by Gawith, you can see that it is in this American style tin, so we're pretty sure that it is actually placed in that tin by Cornell and Deal. I don't think they do anything else to it other than tin it. But if we can get through all the packaging here and give you a look at the flakes themselves, they're fairly thin slice for a Gawith flake. You can see that nice steamed pressed flake there marbled through with several different varieties of Virginia, a little bit of Perique, and a little bit of Burley. Nicely presented in my opinion. Pretty wet, but nicely presented. Excellent. Now on with the vital stats. The strength on this one I'm going to give medium, but it has a fairly creamy body I would say. The taste I will give medium as well. Nicotine level, I'm going to give it medium high. I didn't notice it all the time, but there were definitely different occasions when I'd be smoking a bowl where I could definitely feel the nicotine. The moisture from tin was drowned rat on this baby. Not quite up to Gawith wet, but still drowned rat. Needed some dry time. And then the packaging, a two ounce tin like this. Now, speaking of the tin, let's crack her open. And I'll tell you what it smells like. There's so much packaging going on here. All right. Here we go. <laughs> this one was weird for me when I first shoved my nose in here. I got this crazy nostalgic feeling, this memory, a scent that I don't think I had smelled for years and years and years. To me, it smells like Cocoa Puffs. You know that cereal? Maybe they haven't made it to Europe or other countries, but in America at least, I don't even know if they're still around. But when I was a little kid, when I ate cereal, I don't eat cereal anymore, I often loved Cocoa Puffs. And it doesn't just smell like Cocoa Puffs, it's a corn cereal with chocolate powder flavoring. It doesn't just smell like Cocoa Puffs, it smells like Cocoa Puffs that have been sitting in milk for a while. So there's a sort of creamy, chocolatey, corny kind of uh, smell going on here. And because I can smell that, it's really hard for my mind to go anywhere else. I think there is sort of a hint of that kind of dark, you know, it's a steamed pressed Virginia flake. So there is that sort of dark Virginia flavor or aroma going on there. But yeah, mostly Cocoa Puffs. And then the room note, um, you don't smell much of the chocolate in the smoke, I would say, maybe a hint. You do get a slightly kind of floral note as well. But it's mostly, if you smoked any of the other kind of Gawith dark steamed Virginia flakes, it will be similar to that. It smells like Virginia tobacco. But let's get to the review notes here. This is an interesting blend. I've been kind of vacillating between several different opinions on this, but I'll try to explain to you where I'm at now. Mmm. All right, smoking mechanics. In spite of the fact that I dried out every bowl that I smoked, like I said, it came pretty wet, so it needed dry time. I still found this to be pretty temperamental, um, fairly hard to keep lit, had a tendency to burn a little hot, a little steamy. So you just had to pay a little bit more attention to this blend. You had to work with it a little bit. So it might not be for the novice pipe smoker, I suppose. But how does it taste? Let me light it again. Mm-hmm. All right. There were several people, along with all the people who were recommending that I review this tobacco, there were several people who warned me that I would not like it. And they said it had the Lakeland essence, that floral, some people say soapy quality that some of these Lakeland blends have. And I have had blends that supposedly had the essence in slight 
just a slight touch. Like I think, is it Best Brown? I can't remember now, I'm confusing on my Gawith Hogarth blends, but I had noticed touches in other Gawith blends, but it had never been enough to overpower the underlying tobacco flavor. It was never enough to really put me off the blend. This one, when I first lit it, the very first bowl, I really detected a very soapy, very floral, very sort of perfumey quality. Um, and I was a bit taken aback and I was a bit put off. And there was also a hint of that sort of chocolatey cocoa flavor, but it was sort of underlying the soapy sort of floral perfumey flavor. I will say that essence lessens as you go through the bowl, but it definitely sticks around pretty noticeably, at least for me. Your mileage may vary. Some people obviously like that flavor. There's a reason why Gawith puts that in their blends. Obviously this is a GLP's blend, but produced by Gawith. Um, they wouldn't put something purposefully in there that everyone hated. There are people who like it. It's sort of a traditional English kind of thing to do. I'm not a huge fan. It's not overpowering now, but I can still taste it. I can also taste some really nice, deep, dark, steamed, pressed Virginias in here. It reminds me a bit of <clears throat> if you've had Best Brown Flake, if you've had maybe even Lakeland Dark, even though there are other component tobaccos in those blends, that core of sort of um, rich, dark Virginia that Gawith has, I really enjoy. And that's in here. It's that really deep, kind of bready, um, rich Virginia flavor, and I enjoy it a lot, but it is sort of hampered by the fact that I taste flowers. I taste soap. As far as the Perique goes in this blend, I would not call this a high Perique content blend. I can tell it's in there. It's a little bit spicy. There's just a little, little bit of pepper in there, but it doesn't have that real sort of kind of figgy twang that you can get out of a really heavy Perique blend. Um, I like the quantity, I think. I think it's a pretty good balance. I like I like a lot of Perique actually in a vapor, but this to me is a little darker in character and the Perique in here just sort of adds a little bit more character to the blend. Same with the Burley. Again, it's not something that you're really gonna notice very distinctly, but I think it does add a little more depth, a little more character. There were some people on some forums that I was reading who say that this tastes very similar to uh, Gawith and Hogarth Louisiana Perique Flake. And I've never had Louisiana Perique Flake, but apparently it was a tobacco that G&H made after the original run of Stonehenge Flake was gone. They sort of tried to recreate their own version. I don't think it had the burly in it though, so it was basically the hot steamed pressed Virginias with the Perique and the essence, the chocolatey Lakeland essence added. So there are some people who say that it's almost identical, just not just without the Burley. Um, I can't speak to that, but if you like that blend, you may very well like this blend as well. But I do know that that Louisiana Perique flake is a bit available in bulk most places and for quite a bit cheaper than this blend. So final verdict. For me, that flowery, soapy, chocolatey essence pretty much makes this blend a non-starter for me. There are good tobaccos in here. I can taste them. I know they're there, but it's like somebody just took a bottle of perfume and did a few spritzes over the top. It's really not that much, honestly. But to me, it's just enough to nag at me. And as I'm trying to taste the tobacco, there's this little thing poking me in the back of the head, back of the head, that's the side of the head, the temple, poking me in the temple saying, eh, flowers, perfume, soap. And it just doesn't quite do it for me. There are people who love that flavor. I know you might love this blend, but for me, I like to go out and smell the flowers. I don't wanna eat them, but that's just me. Your mileage may vary. I would recommend trying Stonehenge Flake. You never know. I don't think it's gonna be limited so you don't have to run out there and buy up 20 tins and put them in your cellar. 
but it's worth a try. For a blend that had sort of a mythical reputation built up around it, you might want to go out and see what all the fuss is about. So thank you so much for watching this review of GLP's Stonehenge Flake. I've been your good friend Bradley. You've been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things. I'll see you later.